Hello and welcome to 3ABN Today Live. We're so glad that uh, you joined us this evening. We get to come into your living room and basically uh, be able to communicate. What a time in which we're living. It's amazing mm. that we can literally, any spot in the world, you can talk and communicate with people. Now we have our phones. We can uh, see, I just got a text too from uh, Trinity. I'll call you in a bit there, Trinity. And uh, so what a time that we can talk to people, see people around the world. Jesus yes. said, go ye into all the world. Mm -hmm. And what a tremendous opportunity we have now here at 3ABN, and you do too, to reach the entire world with the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's a risen Savior. He's in this world today. Yeah. I know that he's living no matter what man may say, right? Well, that's, right. that's right. So that, you know that song, don't you? Oh, yes. Tell us what's happening tonight. This is going to be such a rich program, praise mm -hmm. the Lord, because so many people, you know, there's mm -hmm. so much misinformation about mm -hmm. the Lord's Day. And we're going to talk about the truth about the Lord's Day, which, I mean, there's so many people who don't know mm -hmm. what the real Lord's Day is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our, I can't say guests, I'm just going to say our <laughs> brothers and family, right? <laughs> right. I have uh, Brother Ryan Day, Pastor Day, it's good to have you here today. Always a blessing. And, uh, this evening, yeah. I should say. And uh, Pastor John Loma came. Good to be and, here. And uh, been at 3ABN uh, for a long time, well over 20, 20, 20, 20 years. Yeah. You know, wow. and uh, 20 years ago, here. Ryan wasn't even hardly a teenager. <laughs> he was still in puberty. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the beauty of it, though, because look at what you've learned, and now you're able to impart to people around right. the world. And so thank you both Amen. for being here. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be talking about uh, focus on truth books, but on the Lord's Day the truth about the Lord's day. And so when we get into this, I'm going to promise the viewers, uh, take my word for this. If not, call me, let me know, text me something to write 3 ABM. But I'm, I'm going to guarantee you that once you hear this program, if you're looking for truth, you hear the, the program and you get the little book, that's, that's a free gift, by the way. We're not trying to sell you anything tonight. It's a free gift that you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free, right? right? That's what mm -hmm. the Bible says. But before we get into that, I believe that we serve a miracle working God, don't you? That's right. I know you all do. A God of might and miracles. He's big enough to rule the mighty universe, yet small enough to live within our hearts. That's, right. That's the kind of God that we serve. You and me have seen, uh, uh, I have seen some tremendous miracles in the last several weeks, haven't we? Oh, yes. So maybe oh, you yes. should start out a little bit and then tell the folks we'll update them. Okay. Uh, so we both had COVID uh, at the beginning of the, the year. For the first time. For the first time, both of us had COVID and we... <laughs> New Year's Day, we discovered we had it. It knocked us down. Had, yeah. Wow. It knocked us down. Mm -hmm. And so there were days when Danny was stronger mm -hmm. and he helped me. And then there were days when I was stronger and I helped him. And we were out of the country as well. So it was quite an experience, to say the mm -hmm. least. And so... And there were no facilities, no hospitals, no hospitals on the island where we were. Mm -hmm. right. We've done some work there, actually. Someone had left years ago some uh, property and trust to 3ABN, so we're trying to dispose of that in the best way we can, and so we go down there, and why not go in the winter? <laughs> to do it, right? That's right. But we're right. there on a little beautiful island, but no, no hospital there, for right. sure. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Tell, tell <laughs> okay. some, and then I'll well, interject. Right. You're better at so, it. So we ended up with COVID, <laughs> and so we'd heard, well, this new uh, strain. Week, uh, strain is not nearly yeah, as bad variant. as the other. So <laughs> for about a week, uh, you know, it felt like you're going to die, really, and everything hurt and was really terrible. So I said, well, if it's much worse than this, I'd hate to, to have that too. But after about a week, she began to get better, and things began to go normal. I just didn't get improve at all. In fact, the chest and the phlegm and the coughing, sometimes I really thought I was going to choke to death. I couldn't breathe, but I'd cough so much, Ryan, for days wow. and days and went into weeks that it hurt so bad. It felt like mm. he had broken ribs. I've never experienced anything like that. So we go one week and two weeks. Well, by two weeks, we're still there. and She's doing much better, but I'm still struggling. So we go nearly to three weeks, about 17, 18 days later, we're able to come back. Mm -hmm. um, we have a friend who brings us back. So we come back to the States and of course go to a doctor. He sends us to the lab. Um, 18, I still, it's 17 days in, I still had COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, she had been over it. 
Wow. But they took labs, and it's like I've got the long haul, which, you know, you oh, really yeah. don't want to do that because mm. a lot of times that's how you end up dying, of course. And we've had friends do that, including Jim Gilly not too long ago, a great friend. And so that, of course, enters your mind when you're in this, so you wow. just don't seem to be getting better. Mm. So we say, well, Lord's will, whatever, right? So we get the labs uh, from the doctors. They uh, read them for us. And what we find out is we finally tested negative. I did. But Yvonne, because we, I was still sick for 17, 18 days, that's why we had labs done. Her lab showed up and said her D-dimer, you can look that up if you're not sure what it is, but it, 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 it basically tells you whether you have blood clots or not. Hmm. So it says on the test you're supposed to be under the number 243, Anything under that, you pretty well don't have any blood clots. Hers, mine came back 234. They mm -hmm. said, oh, you don't have blood clots. Hers came back 2,500 and something. Wow. Ten times the amount. So they said, we got to put you on Eloquist like right now because you apparently got blood clots. We have no idea how many, but you have ten times the amount. And there's really nothing you can do but pray and wait. Yeah. So now they say, well, we're going to run you... Uh, through some tests. So we did get to go do an ultrasound from the waist down. She didn't have the clots in her legs, but that's good news. But the bad news is then maybe it's in the, the lungs or the chest in that area. So we, for a week or so, we went back and forth and trying to get into this hospital, then another one. And finally... To she, get a CT scan. So now they say, well, we're going to get a CT scan. That's kind of the gold standard. One with um, dye, dye and one with contrast mm -hmm. and one without. So that will tell for sure if there's any blood clots. Well, they always have a hard time getting, <laughs> getting drawing blood from her. She <laughs> has tiny veins, and I hate it because sometimes we go together, and I'm like, I wish, can't you just do me? I, you know, because she just, they really put her through it. And it's just because their veins are hard to get. Well, in this case, we're at the hospital. We've waited a week or so to get in. They try, and they can't get enough blood to match the amount of dye that's going. So they send her home. They say, well, so she's in there praying. What was your prayer? Well, my first prayer was, Lord, please let them find the vein, because they were looking for a vein that would accommodate an IV. Mm -hmm. And they just could not find the one that would accommodate the IV. And I'm like, Lord, please let them find one. And then I thought... Lord, let your will be done, because maybe I wasn't supposed to. Mm. Maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't the Lord's will for me to have that done that day. And I, I'm really... Well, it seems really like it would be. It does, cause... but they never, they never were able to. And most of the time, the hospital won't send you home. They'll just keep trying. They'll bring in an ultrasound right. machine and look and see if they can. But this time, they said... We're just going to send you home if that's okay, and then, you know, you can try again another time or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I didn't resist that. I was no. like, okay. So we came, we came back, but what had hit me about a week before this, Ryan, that really gave us some peace, was I said to Yvonne, you know, had I got over COVID, COVID quickly as you did, we wouldn't have had these blood tests. Right. I'm the one that had to go to the doctor. They're right. the ones that had, they come to my house every day and gave me IVs, vitamin IVs, things that Bruce Farley said you need to get these. And then they gave you stuff for the lungs as well. Right. And she only got a couple, but I got several. We got some in Bahamas and some in here, which really seemed to help. And then the machine they put me on was the nebulizer. nebulizer and all of that mm -hmm. really began to help in the breathing. But it occurred to me, I, it, one day it's like the Lord impressed me. You know what? Well, I got this under control. Don't worry about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because had I not been sick, we would have never known that Body. she had blood clots, right? That's right. Mm. That's right. Wow. And so now all we can do is pray about it. So we called the doctor and said, you know what? We want another test. It's been now about two, two and a half weeks. Right. They said it won't, things won't really show. And, and even on your COVID, everything, you need at least 30 days, maybe longer to get any kind of results from this. So I wouldn't worry about it. Just take your eloquence. Just be careful. Well, when you think you've got a blood clot that could yeah, go you know, to right. your, you know, your heart, your, your whatever, your lungs anytime. But we both had a peace, and she mm -hmm. was very calm. I was more worried about her, you know, than, than mm -hmm. she was, seemed to be worried about herself. But mm -hmm. I, it hit us. 
the Lord's really got this yes. because that's, right. that's the reason why I had it so long and without that. So now I'm saying, thank you, Lord, here I'm praying, get me over it. But you knew what was best. Exactly. Yeah. She's praying well, for the CT scan, but then mm. she said, well, Lord, whatever is best. So we went home without it. So the day before yesterday, we went back to the same lab, mm -hmm. drew our blood again, got her D-dimer that was 2,500 plus 2,517 or whatever. They said it needs to be above 243. I mean below. Below, sorry, two, below 243. This time it's... 203. <laughs> <laughs> 203, yes. where they Praise say the if Lord. you're below, below the 243, wow. then you're oh. out of the clot. You don't worry about the clot. Praise the Lord. But Praise there's the so Lord. she didn't need the CAT scan, no. you know, and all of this. So, I mean. Didn't need the dye. Didn't need the dye, the, the radioactive yeah. stuff incredible. going in my body. Didn't no. need that. Well. And the Lord knew what was best and is, you know, just. He's just so good. I'm just so grateful. To, thank you, Lord. Yeah. I just want Amen. to say publicly, thank mm -hmm. you, Lord, for what you've done. Yeah. Amen. Now, all of that Bless said, you. we know that there's a time for every person to die and precious in the sight of the Lord yes. of the death yes. of the saints. But we're thankful that God said, okay, we can use you a little longer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you get our age, you don't look real long term. But I'm always <laughs> encouraged by uh, Mr. Turner. He's 103. There you go. 103. 103. Yeah. And I, <laughs> said, kids. I said to him a couple years ago, he was talking, he was 101, and he said something about investing in the house or something around doing something. And I said, Mr. Turner, why would you do that? And he looked straight at me and he said, well, I got to think about the future. <laughs> exactly. sure, sure enough, now he's 103 and 103. still <laughs> talking to people on the phones and praying with people, you know, so who knows? Yeah. But anyway, we wanted to share that. Amen. And you Speak both look good. You both look oh. healthy. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Renewed, Lord. Refreshed. We feel good. We got some residual here and there, but you know, a little cough here and there. But I mean, in, in general, the Lord is really, really look rested. rested. So Praise the Lord. We're ready so to. Great. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. 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 Speaking of prayer, we should have prayer. Okay. All right. Yes. Brother Ryan, would you pray for us? Absolutely. Let us pray. Oh, Father in heaven, Lord, I just want to echo. Thank you. Danny and Yvonne's a praise, Lord. Praise thank you, God. You. Yes. Lord. And thank you so much for your healing touch, your healing mm -hmm. hand, and the guidance you. that you provide each and every day that we so desperately need. Thank you. Lord, we just want to praise you for life because yes. we know that every day, every moment, every minute that we draw breath and this heart beats is precious. Thank you. And we don't want to take this time that you've blessed us with, and, and we certainly want to, don't want to take it for granted. Yes. And so, Father, I just want to uplift a prayer that you will continue to pour out your Spirit upon us throughout this program tonight. Yes. That the very sensitive but yet very important topic that we're going to be covering tonight, Lord, uh, it will be blessed by you, it will be right. led by you, yes. and that all the viewers at home that are watching, Lord, will just be drawn to Jesus through this yes. topic. That it's not just about the Lord's day, but more about the Lord of the day yes. that we're talking right. about. And yes. we praise you for that opportunity, Lord. So be with us, lead us and guide us tonight. And uh, Lord, we just turn this time over to you. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Yvonne, maybe right before we get started, you can tell the folk how they get their free books yes. and uh, uh, how to contact us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, we're not, uh, Jill does it wonderful she and Greg, does. they get on she and does. Yvonne and me are always stumbling around. Let's see, uh, <laughs> you can write us or uh, you can email us. Where's that address? So, did you write it down tonight? I do have it oh, written good, down. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. First of all, um, uh, let's just, if, if you want, if you have questions about this program, you can send your questions. You can text them to 618-228-3975. Or you can email them to live at 3abn.tv. Now, for the books, again, you can call 618-627-4651. Or you can go online to 3abn.tv. You can request one free copy, so you'll get a free copy of this book. If you make that request, you can call in for the request or email us um, Nope, see, that's why I need no, to No, you're doing good. Well, you're you can't good. email for the free book, I don't that's think. That's all right. There was books. I thought we had books, but you're doing it's fine. not on here. Okay, now, 
If you want a case of these, all you have to do is pay for the in a shipping. Case. They're 250 in a case, and if you're in the U.S., it's $25 for shipping. All you pay mm -hmm. for is the shipping. These have been provided for you free, mm -hmm. but you okay. just have to pay the shipping. And in the U.S., it's $25 for international shipping. You can call us and find out what that rate is. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Okay, so what we want to talk about tonight is the Lord's Day, the truth about the Lord's Day. We have a series of books. The last one was the truth about the Lord's Day. And so what I'm, I said earlier, um, we're going to turn you guys loose here in just a minute <laughs> on the subject, but we want to find out, does the Lord have a day? If he does have a day, what day is it? Mm -hmm. uh, would the Sunday that people refer to, multi-millions of Christians refer mm -hmm. to Sunday as the Lord's Day, is the Lord's Day and the Sabbath the same day? Uh, so we have many questions about it. Uh, we're going to talk about later. In fact, I'll, I'll bring up now, there are many people that are very deceived about the Lord's Day. Mm -hmm. When we get into it, we'll find out why. It's not just about a day, but as you said, the God of the day, and it's about who are we going to serve right. uh, on this earth. But there are many people and I usually don't call out names, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because Yvonne and I saw where a ministry, uh, Jimmy Swaggart Ministries, was writing about, has a book written about Seventh-day Adventists and the falsities and the falsity of the Sabbath, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of people like the T.D. Jakes that go out publicly mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Creflo Dollars and, and uh, Jesse DePlantis, you name them, I, you, we could go on and on, Kenneth Copeland, whomever that will tell you that the Sabbath has been done away with, mm. but they won't give you any proof of that. So I remember, Ryan, years ago, I offered on a program, we were talking to someone live, and a lady said, but I know my pastor says the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday. And I said, well, tell him, call your pastor, we'll wait on you, call your pastor, and when you get back, call us back here, call centers open, they're gonna take your call. And if he gives me a scripture showing that Jesus, when he was on earth, changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, I'll give you a million dollars. And she's like, well, 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 a, a million, well, what if somebody, else? I said, well, in fact, any of you just call in if you want to. You know, it's not that we have that kind of money, but there's no scripture right. in the Bible <laughs> where, where Jesus changed. <laughs> yeah, that was not a bet, by the way. I don't gamble. That's, that's not a gamble. <laughs> We know the answer. There's no script. Jesus did not change the Sabbath from right. Saturday to Sunday. There's right. no, nothing in there. So if Jesus didn't change the Sabbath, somebody did. They tried to. So we need, we'll find out tonight, well, who did change the Sabbath? Then who would possibly have the authority to change God's law? So all of that is in this little book. So we go down. So my thing is that, that with these ministries, I'm not worried about them openly they write books, they'll say things on the air, but they won't uh, give you a chance to rebuttal. Like no one asked me, did they you, John, when they said, wrote about the Sabbath as, you know, Seventh-day Adventist and the Sabbath and the commandments, that's old. No one asked me, they didn't ask you. No, matter of fact, I wrote to mm. some of these guys on YouTube, these naysayers that love mm -hmm. to post videos, but they don't like rebuttal. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to argue, but I just said, I sent a very respectful letter, I said, um, I, I saw your video and I understand that you are saying the Sabbath is done away with. It's not legitimate any longer. Sunday is the new day of worship. Seventh-day Adventists are wrong about the Sabbath. And I said, I would like, as a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, I would like to challenge you, since you like to post videos, why don't we do uh, a video where you are asking questions and we are both responding. Questions are being asked to us and we're responding. Let the people decide which one is telling the truth. Never got a reply. Mm -hmm. Then I went to somebody who knew this person personally, gave them my business card. I said, please have this person call me. They said, what's about? I said, I'm a pastor. You are also a pastor of the Adventist Church. You work for the Adventist Church. He's your good friend. Get him in touch with me. Wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So here's the point that Danny's making. There are a lot of people, you can say anything. But you have to legitimize what you say by a thus saith the Lord. Amen. That's the That's only right. authority. Amen. That's right. Ecclesiastical authorities, as Ellen White says, no matter how multiple or how discordant they are, we must always demand a plain thus mm -hmm. saith the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. In favor of anything that we believe. So that's what the program is about. And Danny and Yvonne, I mean, years ago, you've wrote about the commandments. 
who did the uh, the one that you read, and Brian's going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about that. Shelly yeah. Shelley and Danny wrote that. I'm, I'm going to give that to you because that's why you're here. Sure. And then now the Lord's Day, and this is something that people wonder why do we do this? Why do you guys keep talking about the Sabbath? Well, Isaiah 58. The Lord said, Isaiah 58, verse 12, 13, and 14. I just start. He says, they that shall be of thee, speaking of us, speaking of anybody following him, shall build up the old waste places. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They shall raise up the foundation of many generations. That's right. They shall be called repairers of the breach, That's right. mm -hmm. restorers of paths to dwell in. So we have to raise up, rebuild, repair, and restore. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. Sabbath has been, and then the very next thir verses, 13 and 14, identifies exactly what God is talking about. That's right. And he brings out, if you call, if you call my day, the, the, the holy day of the Lord, a delight. Yes. But pastors say, it's not a delight, it's a burden. Right. Mm. So I'm going to leave it there, lay mm. some value, because I have some things yeah. I want to bring out later on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Yeah. Ryan, um, the thing I think I, I want to get across, and I know you do too, uh, you came from another denomination. We want to mm -hmm. say, you're not saved by keeping the right. Sabbath, right? No. We're, we're saved by serving the, the Lord, and there are many people who are maybe not in church or worship Sunday that are living to all the light they have. Mm -hmm. right. So that's all God expects from us. We get to heaven, we're going to find out none of us knew everything. <laughs> so we're not talking about individuals tonight, but we're talking, we may talk about uh, systems. Yeah, systems. systems. We may talk about these preachers who are openly out there preaching, but God has people in all churches. That's right. So Tonight, you know, he, he, if, if you've not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, we encourage you to do that. Right. But tonight, we want to make clear from the Word of God, and what we're going to be talking about will be go through the same outline. That's what we put here so that you can take these books, mm -hmm. 250 per box, and pass them out to people uh, in these things as they begin to go out. There's already been, I think, two and a half or three million of them out and some of the others, many as six million. And so tonight we're making this offer because I have some donors who paid for them already. They said, we'll pay for them. You just send them to people for free on the condition that they don't sit in your closet at church or wherever Amen. that you get them passed out and they get into the hands of people. And all you're doing is paying the postage, which for a big box of 250 books is $25. So what we want to talk about though is the attack We've seen, and I talked about it in the sermon last fall, attack against the sixth and seventh commandment, even within the Adventist church. But right now, Yvonne and I hadn't really realized the devil is not only trying to deceive the world, but he's deceiving, starting his campaign in an open way that I haven't seen before, mm -hmm. even within the church, trying to discourage people that Saturday is any day will do. Tell right. us about it. So there was a Christian artist uh, that was invited to a youth convocation. And Adventist youth. The, adv the convocation was mm -hmm. Adventist. The artist was not. So the artist started saying. We well, watched it ourselves. Yeah, we saw it. We saw it. So it's not something that someone mm -hmm. told us about. We actually saw this. So the artist said, um, you people worship on Saturday. As he's running back and, he's and going forth back the and stage forth on the and everybody's stage. all hyped up. They've been, he's been, got them all clapping. And, and these you know, are young it. people. Mm -hmm. These are mostly young people. And they're, they're listening. They're all into the music. And, and the guy is saying, you, you folks worship on Saturday. And he's going back and forth. And he said, but my God is a God of every day. So pick your Sabbath. Pick your Sabbath. You want to pick Monday? Pick Monday. Pick Monday. So just pick a Sabbath. Pick a Sabbath. My God is God of all, and, every day. And what, what was so disturbing, really, you know, you kind of, you're not surprised that someone who might not know any better is saying that, but I was surprised at the response of the young people. They loved because it. Because they, yeah, were, they were all clapping for him. They were clapping for him, for him and, 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 and in essence agreeing with what he was saying. And I'm like... Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. These kids, they Heart need, breaking. they, yes. You know what it is? It's the adoration of man above God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's our society today. People right. worship idols and icons. You know, yes. American idol. Mm -hmm. These, you know, people that we, that's why, let me just vent here on this one. Giving a person an award 
for Christian music yeah. mm. is ludicrous to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So did you, by getting that award, you have more baptisms in the world this year than anybody else? We follow the way of the world and the church is mm. being, Satan is trying to cause the woman to be carried away by the flood, Revelation 12. He's pouring water after the woman to cause her to be carried away by the flood, the flood of music, flood of popularity, flood of worship of individuals, flood of feeling, and that's what's happening nowadays. But this topic can only exist, and the reason why this is in print is because this, this untruth about the Sabbath being changed can only exist in an atmosphere of ignorance. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So I want to reiterate, yes. and I'm so glad you brought that out, Danny, and, and, we reiterate, and we're going to bring this out even more. We're not saying that the Sabbath is the method of salvation. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can't be in a saving relationship and ignore the very day that Jesus himself honored. Right. Exactly. And blessed. So you can't say, he's my Lord, he's my creator, but I'm not going to do what he did, and I'm going to do other than what he said to do. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the Lord, the first and foremost thing, and I reiterate what you said, Danny, get to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. This topic cannot in and of itself save you. Mm -hmm. Salvation is in Christ alone by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. But once you say you are in a saving relationship, you cannot rashly say, I know what you said, Lord, but I got other plans. Right. And right. I'm going to be in heaven no matter what you say. <laughs> so we're going to lay this out tonight. Okay. So, some so, so why don't we start here? Uh, does the Lord have a day? Absolutely. And so when did he is when and where did he establish that? So we'll let you guys just kind of go back and forth and okay. we'll jump well, in. Well, I talked a lot. I'm going to give time. Ryan a shot. First. Okay. Well, you know, to establish it very clearly, I go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Okay. Many, and I've only using this starting with the scripture because many people start with this right. in their yes. commentaries. I've read many commentaries yeah. from yes. different uh, Sunday believers or Sunday mm -hmm. keepers that use this text as evidence that the Sabbath or the Lord's day is Sunday. Wow. But it simply says here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. So the question is, does the Lord have a day? Revelation 1, verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's, Lord's day. day. So he makes it very clear right there in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Patmos, somewhere around 95 to 100 AD. You know, John is writing full of the Spirit and he says he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. So does the Lord have a day? Yeah. Absolutely mm -hmm. he does. Now, how do we know which day that is? Okay, Pastor referenced this earlier, but we're going to go to Isaiah and we're going to go to uh, chapter 58, Isaiah chapter 58. Mm -hmm. And then notice what the Lord says here in the latter verses. We're in, verses thir we're in verse 13. Uh, Revelation chapter, excuse me, Isaiah chapter uh, 58, verse 13. It says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, and this mm -hmm. is God speaking, mm -hmm. and he says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath. So the, the, the idea here that he's ex explaining or that he's showing here is that he doesn't, we don't want to put our foot on the Sabbath. We don't want to dis dishonor it. We don't want to uh, 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 make a mockery of it by stomping on it or treading on it. He says, take mm -hmm. your foot away from it and, and, and call it what? Call it a delight. But notice what he goes on to say. He says, from doing your pleasure on my, my holy day. Mm -hmm. So does the Lord have a day? Yes. yes. Revelation 1.10 says he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. But which day is the Lord's day? According to the Bible, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, God himself says from doing pleasure on his holy day. And he, he, he identifies that day as the Sabbath. So that's a great text. In fact, it goes on to say uh, and call the Sabbath a delight, a holy day of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Now tie that also. I'm taking a little bit of a journey here. We're going to go to the New Testament because this is where New Testament mm -hmm. Christians say, or you know, when they say they're New Testament Christians, they say, well, I'm a New Testament Christian. Mm -hmm. And in the New Testament, Jesus done away with that Sabbath or he, he done away with that old day and there's a new day now. Mm -hmm. But it's quite interesting that uh, Jesus shows up in Mark chapter 3. And notice what he says here. This is Mark chapter 3. And he says in verse 27, notice what it says here in Mark chapter 3 and verse, uh, oh, excuse me, I made a mistake here. Mark 2.27. Mark 2.27. That's where I'm meant to go. My, my apologies. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And notice what the Bible says very clearly. This is Jesus' words. He says here, the Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. So I love he establishes the fact that he, mm -hmm. that, that the Sabbath, the creator created the Sabbath, uh, you know, again, not man for the Sabbath, but he made the Sabbath for man as a gift. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. made the Sabbath. He created the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But then notice what he says in the very next verse. This is Jesus himself. He says, therefore, the son of man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Sabbath. The Sabbath. And then to nail it down, let's just nail it down even further. And I'm going to pass to Pastor John here. Sure. 
<laughs> go to the Ten Commandments. I mean, these are the <laughs> Ten Commandments of the Lord, right? right? And in the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments, which is the Sabbath commandment, right? You're saying, well, which day is the Sabbath there? Or, 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 or does the Lord have a Sabbath there? Or does the Lord have a day? And which day is that? Right here, Exodus chapter 20. Uh, verses, uh, verse 8 through 11. Mm -hmm. Notice what it says here. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So he tells us the commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Then he tells us how to keep it. And then notice what it says here in verse 9 and onward. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, l l you can't get any clearer than that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the very commandment of the Lord says that it's His Sabbath day. It's the day He created. You and I don't have a Sabbath. And I just want to make that very That's clear. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the idea that, that comes up in today's time is that, well, the Lord does have a day and it's Sunday, or in this case, of this brother who's at this you know, Adventist conference, just pick a day, just whatever day you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And I've had so many people over the years tell me that. I've had people come to my evangelistic series. They get angry, they walk out, I call them or I talk to them, they say, well, you know, Brother Day, uh, Saturday is your Sabbath and Sunday is yeah. my yeah. Sabbath. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. <laughs> if we're Bible Christians, and again, I understand how people mm -hmm. come to that twisted right. conclusion because they hear other people say it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're pastor, or they read it in a book or a commentary. But at the end of the day, the only book that matters That's is right. the truth of God's Word, the Word of God. That's and right, right here in the Word of God, nowhere does it say you have or own a Sabbath to be able to call your own or to transfer or to move from one day to another. Mm. Right here in the very commandment of the Lord, it says here, but the seventh day is the, not a, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. very definite. Mm -hmm. that's Again, right. he didn't say go pick a Sabbath or the Lord created a Sabbath. No, 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 no. It says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it very, very, very clear here for in, in verse 11, therefore in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and he rested the seventh. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. That means he made it holy. Mm -hmm. It's his day. It can't be changed. That's right. It cannot be switched from another day to another. You can't show up to anywhere on, on, on YouTube, in a church, in a book, and say you have a Sabbath day to pick and choose. The Bible makes mm -hmm. it clear that it's God's day. That's it's right. the seventh day. It's the Sabbath of the Lord. It is His day to declare when it is and how it should be honored. And we should, as Bible Christians, honor it just as He says. Amen. So when this Amen. singer started out, he said, I know you all worship on Sabbath, but God Saturday. has got... Saturday. Saturday, mm -hmm. but God is God of every day. Well, that's a true statement. That's true. God is God of every day. But he says he's the Lord of the Sabbath, the only day. And John, you can get us into oh, that. Yeah. God did a couple things at creation, and maybe you can tell us yeah, what I'm he clear, did. I'm clear for takeoff here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. Mark 2, verse 27 and 28 says, The Sabbath was made for man. Mm -hmm. So the natural deduction would be, when was it made? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't I ask that? I made you this cake. When did you make it? Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. I made this suit. When did you make it? I've got to, you got to make the suit before I could put it on. you got to mm -hmm. make the cake before I can eat it. you got to make the Sabbath before I can keep it. All okay. right. So let's look at when he did this. And now let's ask a question. I'm going to lay the foundation here. Here. Let's just do this, this rhetorical thing. How many days are there in a week? I hear you answering me. Seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many days did God use to create the world? Six. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So why do we have a seven day week? Now follow this very importantly here. We're going to go to Genesis chapter two, verse one to three, and then I'm going to bring out something, Danny, that's going to really mm -hmm. open, I think, open people's eyes in a way that has not done, I mean, a way that I try to find creative ways yeah. to approach mm -hmm. something that seems to be repetitious. Mm -hmm. But let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And let's look at the only thing that God created on the seventh day. Nothing physical, no trees, no animals, no fish, no sun, no moon, no mm -hmm. stars. You can't find any physical reason for the seventh day to exist. Mm -hmm. There's no physical mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I need one more day to make something else. Right. Mm -hmm but he did make something else. So let's break it down. For six days, he made all the physical attributes of creation, including man and woman. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the seventh, he could have said, I'm done. But he said, I need one more day. Why? Because seven is the number of perfection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't stop at six. See, the mark of the beast is 666. He stops short of perfection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And six is man's number. When you choose man above God, that's the 666. But now let's look at Genesis chapter two, verse one to three. And it makes it very clear that there was no more days needed to create anything physical. Genesis 2 verse 1, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were what? Finished. Finished. 
So I don't need any more days to create anything physical. So why, so Lord, can we, let me pause right there. So if God was alive today and creation was happening before us and he said, it's all done, but I need one more day. My natural question would be, well, why do you need one more day if everything is done? Mm -hmm. Because I want to create something better than everything physical I've done. Mm -hmm. I want to create something better than everything physical I've done. I'm going to cap off creation with something that's going to be eternal. Look what he says. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And here's the capstone. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Ryan made this point, but let me reiterate it. He didn't bless the first. Mm -hmm. You could pick the first, but it's not blessed. Mm -hmm. He didn't bless the second. He didn't bless the third, the fourth, the fifth, or the sixth. He only blessed one day. Mm -hmm. So now watch this. Let's just pull this together. There were two things that God did before sin entered the world. Right. One was the Sabbath. The other one was marriage. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. We, we talked about, the, we talked about the, the bold homosexuality that's rampant in the world, and mm -hmm. it's affecting the church also. Mm -hmm. But look at this. The only two institutions God created during creation are both the objects of Satan's hatred, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the marriage and the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But the same reason is used for ignoring the Bible marriage and the Bible Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the marriage distortion to start out. Instead of honoring the biblical marriage, man to woman, mm -hmm. men marry men, and women marry women, and they justify it by saying, as long as we love each other, right. that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. right. And then they pick the gender they prefer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God, I know what gender you set up in the garden, but I prefer another gender. So men marry men, women marry women. And the world says, it's fine, as long as you love. Why, where, 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 you see where I'm headed? Yeah. So now let's look at the Sabbath distortion. Instead of keeping the day that God blessed, countless Christians say they justify it by saying, as long as we love the Lord, that's mm -hmm. all that matters. Then they pick mm -hmm. the day they prefer. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Watch this. So, so Satan leads countless Christians to pick the day they prefer and countless worldlings to pick the gender they prefer. Mm -hmm. The same justification is behind Sunday worship and same-sex marriage, they choose what they prefer above what God mm -hmm. mm. has commanded. So God sanctified those two He sanctified the marriage. The marriage and he sanctified the Sabbath. But in both cases, look at the reason they say, as long as we love, right. yeah. that's all that matters. Wow. So men mm -hmm. love men and women love women. It's, as long as we love, and Christians <clears throat> use the same justification. As long as we love the Lord, that's all that matters. Wow. But the Sabbath is not a suggestion mm -hmm. and neither is marriage a suggestion. It doesn't say mm -hmm. find who you love and marry them. It says find man, Danny, find the woman you love and marry her. Ryan, find the woman you love and marry her. Mm -hmm. John, praise the Lord, marry to a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the world has gone down that path yeah. and there are laws passed. Now, why, you don't see where I'm going. There are laws passed to make same-sex marriage acceptable. Mm -hmm. Soon there's going to be a law passed to make Sunday worship acceptable. There you go. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's going down the same path. Why wouldn't right. it be? Mm -hmm. The true. devil first made it acceptable in the, in the minds of people. Then he yeah. made it legislatively acceptable. Mm -hmm. So Sunday is acceptable already in the minds of people. It's going to mm -hmm. soon be legislatively acceptable. Mm -hmm. and that's where the devil was really, mm -hmm. really sharp. Or, 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 I hate to give him credit for stuff, but he knew how to deal with people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when uh, same-sex marriage became law of the land, a lot of Adventists didn't get it. It's like, well, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not important. Uh, you know, that's not important. No, wait a minute. If same-sex marriage can become law of the land, which is an abomination to God, Thanks. so can the Sabbath. So can it be sure. changed from whatever, as you mm -hmm. said, you know, people picking and choosing. So we didn't get it. Many Adventists didn't see anything about it. And they said, oh, well, that's no big deal. That's that just, you know, this is a big deal. Well, wait, when the Sunday law comes, no, you're already being tested. You're already seeing who you're going to serve. We should be, look, when we see those things, we should right. be aware of them. Mm -hmm. 
And love is not the license for disobedience. Right. Amen. But right. love is being used today as the license for disobedience, as I said in my sermon, I think when I was here, I said, we say we love you, Lord, and they put another coin in the machine of disobedience. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. I love you, but I'm going to put another coin in the right. machine of disobedience. Mm -hmm. So I will pick what I prefer, Lord. I love you, but I'm going to pick what mm -hmm. I prefer. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a spirit there. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what we keep ignoring. And I'm going to just back up a little bit here and say this, reiterate what Danny said. Many of you watching the program may say, I don't know what the Sabbath is. Mm -hmm. I have never heard about it. I had a pastor in California. Uh, I won't mention the name, but um, he invited me to his radio, his television network. And I knew I was there for a particular reason. I prayed and that day on a Sunday network. He said, we want to do a new program called Sabbath versus, versus Sunday. I have the mm -hmm. video. I, need, mm -hmm. I should yeah. revive it and show it on sure. the yeah. again sure. to show you the actual Doug Batchelor, Alan Reinick. So anyway, his radio crew on a Sunday network says, why would you want to do a program like that? <laughs> he said, because, and this is the honesty of some preachers don't mm -hmm. even know. Yeah. He said, I was just preaching last Sunday on the Ten Commandments. And when I got to the Sabbath, this preacher said, I really didn't know about the Sabbath. So mm -hmm. I just chose work ethic. Be an be a honest person okay. in your work ethic. Mm -hmm. So there are honest pastors who don't know. Right. Sure. Yeah. There are honest Christians mm -hmm. who don't know. Right. And he said, I want to know. So he began the program by saying, at the beginning of the program, welcome to, and I won't mention the program because people might know it. He said, today, we're not going to do it because grandma said or because your pastor said, because you were raised that way. We only want to do it because the Bible says it. Okay. And uh, he said, and so... When, the, when they asked the program directors, like, our, well, who are you going to find? And the Lord had me there that day, and he leaned over and said, Pastor Loma King, he's an Adventist. He's a Seventh-day Adventist. Let him pick two guys, and I'll pick two guys. At the halfway in the program, and you see this in the video, he said, <laughs> guys, they're killing us. Give me something. <laughs> you know why? Because we only yeah. mention the Bible. But yeah. the Lord's Day, where did that come from? Ignatius yeah. Loyola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was the first one. And I have the document here where, where Ignatius Loyola, a Catholic Jesuit, mm -hmm. first gave that title to the first day of the week and tried to anathemize the Sabbath by calling it a Judaizing day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why today people use the, they call it the Jewish, the Jewish Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. But it takes a long time for error to turn to concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John, that's great. And mm -hmm. without, again, without giving names, one of the people that he's in California, that he had, we'll call them, I won't call them debates, but discussions about discussions that later I talked to. And this guy says, you know, John and I, we really had some debates. Now he thought he held his own, you know, and John of course thought he <laughs> held his own, but here's what happened years and years later. Yeah. So in God's timing, he read the little books. And he read the other three books. Yes. And his wife called me, who's been a pastor for 40 years as well. Okay. And said, we finally get it now. We mm -hmm. never got it. You Praise planted the God. seed, John. Wow. Yes. 40 years ago, 30 years yes. ago, whatever that was, you planted the seed. And he said, she said, both of them, we finally get it. We never got any of this. Hellfire, we never understood it. The wow. Sabbath, we understand we never did. And that's so amazing. Uh, Ryan, we got 13 minutes in a minute. You'll <laughs> let people know again how to get the books. Yes. But I wanted to, one of the questions I have here, we're following along I'm with the little sure. book here. People will say, yeah, Ryan, but the problem is why, why didn't the New Testament doesn't, you know, show the, the Sabbath, the keeping oh. of it. But they say the, the Sabbath in the Old Testament, you can't show people kept the Sabbath before Mount Sinai. Mm. So the question I put, the Sabbath was made for man. So let me ask you, what would God's purpose be in instituting a seventh day rest for man at creation and then <laughs> excluding Adam and Eve and all their descendants, including Abraham, from resting on it until he gave the Ten Commandments to Moses in the Mount Sinai and later. So it says, why would God for over 2,000 years withhold from his people the blessings that he had attached to the observance of his holy day, the seventh day? So what do you say when they say, yeah, but there's no, nobody in the Old Testament kept uh, the, the Sabbath. 
Oh, that's you that's know? not that's not true at all. Obviously, before the Ten Commandments. Before the before Ten Commandments. Well, the Ten Commandments were given formally by God in Exodus 20. So we just read a portion of that text uh, in Exodus 20 directly from the commandments, where God is verbally giving uh, the children of Israel. He's He's telling it to them. He's giving it to them verbally there in uh, Exodus chapter 20. And so to say that the the Ten Commandments only appear there and that there's no other mention of the Sabbath or the keeping of the commandments, uh, you know, f you know, before Mount Sinai is simply just not accurate. For instance, if you just go four chapters before, four chapters before. Now, the idea is that God only gives this to the Jews at Mount Sinai, but the Sabbath was not a thing and God did not expect his people to have to keep the Sabbath before then. In other words, they're establishing that idea or that principle uh, of the, the concept that it's Jewish, that it's just for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting that uh, the Bible makes it very clear here in, in Exodus chapter 16, because when you get to Exodus 16, uh, and the children of Israel are out there and they're just, they're wandering around in the in the wilderness and they've only been out there for just a couple of weeks, right? I mean, they're just coming out of, of, uh, of Egypt and they're, they're approaching Mount Sinai, but they haven't arrived yet. And they're out there and they start whining, complaining and murmuring, oh, God's brought us out here to die. And it's interesting that God hears their complainings and he says to Moses, he says, Moses, he says, I'm going to rain bread from heaven mm -hmm. for six days. And by the way, you can mm -hmm. read this text in Exodus chapter 16 and just read those first few verses all the way through uh, that chapter there. Uh, and, and we're not going to have time to read at all, but it's interesting here that he actually says here uh, in verse 4, notice he says, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven. This is Exodus 16 verse 4. Behold, I will rain bread from, heaven, bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now has there been a law given Come yet? On. Formally. Come on. Has the Ten Commandments shown up? All now right. you can imagine these people show up and be like, well, law? What law? And, and, and what's the test? What's the test that he uses? He's going to rain bread from heaven for six days. Mm -hmm. And on the sixth day, he says, now I'm going to rain a double portion of bread. And then they're, you're to go out early in the morning each day to, to, to pick up this bread. And on the sixth day, go out and gather a double portion because on the seventh day, and he even confirms it here, which is the Sabbath of the Lord, I'm not going to rain any on the seventh day. And they are to remain in their tents and not go out and gather any on the, on the Sabbath because there are going to be none. Now for the folks at home, this is before he gave the Ten Commandments. This is, before, this is four chapters before Exodus 20. Two so weeks before they got to Sinai. Yeah. So God hasn't even presented to them the commandments yet. Okay. But yet it's quite interesting that he said to test them whether they will keep my law or not. Yes. Okay. And notice yes. how if you read the language in this chapter where he's explaining to them how they should keep the Sabbath and even on down here and I, 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 I missed the particular text here. Go to verse 29. 29. 20, that, might be the, 29. that might be the one. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's what I was going to. Mm -hmm. So that, that God rains the bread from heaven, right? Mm -hmm. All six days, the double portion on the sixth, mm -hmm. but on the seventh... <laughs> <laughs> and look at what he said. On the seventh, there's still those people who say exactly what Pastor was just explaining. You know what? I heard what God has said. And I know <laughs> God said this. And I know God said not to do this and to do that. But I'm going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. still went out on the seventh day. And guess what they found? They didn't Nothing. find anything right. because God's word is exactly what it is. It's, it's eternal. It's sure. So they go out, they don't find anything. And so God now comes back to Moses and he says this in verse 29. Uh, this is Exodus chapter 16, verse 29. He says, see, for the Lord has given the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man reign, remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. And then notice verse 30. Yeah, uh, exactly. Right. Verse 30, it says, so the people rested on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting because when you read verse 28 right before this, they had went out and notice what, notice when they went out on the Sabbath, notice what God says here to Moses. He says, how long will you refuse you to keep my commandments mm -hmm. and my laws? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now oh. okay. How long you pray to the Sabbath? <laughs> it's powerful. How long refuse you to keep? Well, there we go. What, what laws? What commandments? Yeah. What Sabbath? We don't know anything about it. Notice how the, the, the implication here is that they would have already have known. There yeah. was God, that, that information about the Sabbath and the commandments, they would have been familiar with this language and this understanding, which is why God is calling them on it. How can God, uh, you know, bring some type of correction or some type of, of uh, uh, discipline upon a, a group of people who had never heard this before? That would be unfair. Mm -hmm. But in this way, we know, we know God is fair and God is just. And so, yes, in this case, we do see it 
before Mount Sinai. And then, of course, when you get to the New Testament, which we're going to open the door for this, there's plenty of evidence that shows that even after Jesus Christ had died on the cross, many people say, oh, Jesus done away with it, the cross. There's no mention of the Sabbath in the New Testament. And there's many multiple examples in the New right. Testament. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got to build on what he just said. Okay. Because this is a reiterating so that repetition become a great teacher. Why would God ask how long? Right. Mm -hmm. right. If there was not a determined period of time where this repetition of the Sabbath, the Sabbath, right. the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath. And he's asking them, how long are you going to refuse to keep my commandments and my mm -hmm. laws? Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't, we didn't get to Sinai yet. It's not on tables of stone yet. <laughs> right. But let you me take you to something. To and a lot of people say, this is a text that most people don't see. Exodus, Exodus 5, 5. The Sabbath is there. Mm -hmm. Most people don't see it. But if you understand Hebrew, you'll see it. Mm. One of the reasons why Pharaoh got mad at Moses is look what he did. Read Exodus 5.5, 5, Yvonne. And Pharaoh said, look, the people of the land are many now, and you make them rest from their labor. Huh? That they may what? What, mm -hmm. what did the Lord say? Rest from the labor. The word there, rest, is Shabbat. Shabbat. Wow. Okay. He was okay. restoring the Sabbath before they even got out of Egypt. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's mentioned before they even get out of Egypt. Yes. You see the movie, in the movie, The Ten Commandments with, with uh, Yul Brenner. Right. And, and, and what's the other one? Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. Yeah. <laughs> That's where Pharaoh says, you're going to make brick without straw. That was the reason mm -hmm. that they did that in the movie, because he gave them a day to rest. He restored the day to rest. And it says, rest from their labor. Why? Because mm -hmm. God did that at the end of creation week. Mm -hmm. So right. we see here in the, in the illusion is, let's go back even further. Genesis 26 and verse Yes, five. I was actually going to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Go to so that, Ryan. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about that because it says, one of the reasons why Abraham was blessed yeah. mm -hmm. is because the Bible well, says... Well, you're looking that up, Yvonne. Tell the folk how they can get these books yes. real quick, okay? Okay. So you can call us at 618. That's six the Lord's Day. The truth about the Lord's Day, 250 per book. Okay, and so it's going so, along no, with the outline. I mean, case. 250 per case, sorry. Mm -hmm. And it's going along with the outline tonight of what you're hearing tonight. Most of this is in this little book already. So if you say, well, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a Pastor Loma King or Ryan Day, well, you don't have to be. It's right here in the, in the mm -hmm. book, so you can pass these out. Yes. So you get them. So you can uh, call us at 618 627 4651 or go online to 3abn.tv. You can request one free copy, but you can get a case of these to pass out. The case is free. You just pay for shipping. Mm -hmm. And in the U.S., it's $25, only $25 for 250 of these booklets. That's good That's deal, in right, the U.S. Right. Oh, man, yeah. International shipping, you just call and find out what that rate is. But in the U.S., $25 for 250 mm -hmm. of these booklets. Mm -hmm. Now, you might have some questions about what's going on, what we're talking about tonight. You can text your questions because we're going to take questions in the okay, second hour. second hour, hopefully here in a few minutes. We yes, mm -hmm. yes, 618-228-3975. It's on the screen right now, I see. Yes, and then okay. you can email us at live at 3abn.tv. So either okay. way, you can send your questions there. And then once again, go to 3abn.tv if you want to get cases of these Focus on Truth booklets. Okay. $25. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You were going to Genesis, Genesis 26, 26 and verse five, Yeah, no, I mean, right? just very point the pastor's making that I was also heading in that direction because <laughs> great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the <laughs> idea that, that uh, the commandments are not seen before Sinai, it's just, it's absurd because the Bible makes it very clear, even here in Genesis chapter 26, when God is, is declaring the blessing that he's going to bring upon Abraham and his descendants. And why? Why is he going to bring that blessing upon them yes. and multiply that seed? Verse 5, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, wait a second. Commandments? Well, that's not till Exodus 20. Mm. Well, that's not till Mount Sinai. That's not till the Ten Commandments. No, 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 no. God's law is eternal. God's law has always been as long as God is because it's a reflection of His very character. And so just because we don't see it explicitly written in text does not mean that God's law, the entirety of it, including the Sabbath, was not kept by His people prior to Sinai. But you even go over to James chapter 2, verse 10. It says, makes it very clear that God does not give His law out in partial segments or mm -hmm. fragmented segments. Oh, just keep these 
these three here and you don't have to worry about these. Or, as long as you keep nine of them, you're okay. Just leave out this one. That's good enough. No, 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 no. James chapter 2 verse 10 says, if you've broken one, you've broken them all. It's a mm. package deal. Mm -hmm. And so when it says here that he kept his commandments right here in Genesis, this is some mm. 400, some odd 500 years before Moses would even receive the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Right here is confirmation that he would have been a Sabbath keeper as well. Mm. So you have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob wrestles with the Lord. His name is changed to Israel. He has 12 sons. They become the progenitors of the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. They go into Egypt as, Isra as, as Hebrews come out as Israelites, mm -hmm. the called out ones. So long before the Israelites ever existed, Abraham was not a Jew. That's right. And he kept God's command. Amen. Yeah. Uh, he was yeah. born in he was good. born in Chaldea in the province of Babylon, a Babylonian right. yes. province. Province. Right. He was not a Jew. The Jews were not in existence for another 400 years. Mm -hmm. Wow, what, that is what good. I, it is. What I love about uh, 26 verse 5, it's not just if he said I, you know, kept he kept my commandments. It's a, well, but what command? He just like goes on and on and on. Yeah. My charge, you kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my laws. Yes. Like in other words, you yes. can't come up with any excuse right. because he's, he said, I'll make sure this is not going to be misunderstood. So right away, we know it's not a Jewish thing. Was Abraham, who is not a Jew, right. is obedient right. to God's commandments, God's statutes, and God's laws. But watch this. Look at the ludicrous nature. <laughs> if the Sabbath is only to be kept after the commandments are given, watch out now then murder wasn't murdered till the commandments were given. Uh -oh. mm. then neither, neither was adultery. Uh -oh. Neither was taking God's name in vain. Neither that was mercy. dishonoring your parents a problem. Uh, or idolatry. Neither was anything in the commandments ever a problem. But we see from Cain's day, murder was wrong. Mm -hmm. right. We see disobedience was not looked upon as favorable by God. We see when polygamy came into practice, it was not acceptable to God. Mm. Why? Because God gave one man to one woman. Right. And we're just getting mm. started. All right. Oh, okay. Ooh, what do you think so I'm, far? I'm just excited. This is rich. <laughs> this is so rich. And I love mm -hmm. new perspectives and different perspectives on things. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a blessing. No, it absolutely mm -hmm. is. So what we're going to do, uh, we'll try to take your questions. Uh, you can call in. She gave you how to do it right. You can text yes. or call in. Give us one more time. Yes. Text Maybe they'll put questions it on the screen. to 618-228-3975. Okay or email your questions to live at 3abn.tv. Okay, we'll leave that up for a second. So um, we have so much, to, literally we could go for hours, but if people <laughs> call in questions, we'll try to take a few here and there in order to answer them. And, uh, but to me, this is, this is great fun. I love this, I enjoy yeah. it. You know, a reason, setting down reasoning together what the Praise Bible God. says about mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're gonna have to take a short break. Don't go away. We'll be back in just a moment. Hello and welcome back to 3 ABN Today Live. I don't know about you all, but I've been having a great time Woo. in the Lord. Woo. It's always good to hear everybody's perspective. And that's kind of what we've done. I guess any Adventist writer, maybe any the theologian or theological writer, whatever, how you want to say it, you, you don't just come up with all this stuff. Over time, you see what other people have written. You right. see what the Bible says. So in this little book, The Truth About the Lord's Day, basically everything we're covering is in here. It's not that I thought of it all, but over the years and looking what other people have found and written and the truth given. So we put together this little book, The Truth, if you're just joining us, Truth About the Lord's Day, that's absolutely uh, free. She'll talk about it again in just a little bit. We just did a few minutes ago. But if you're just joining us, uh, how you can get these books, you just pay the shipping, 250 I think it's $25. And you can uh, email or um, text us, right? Yes. So, well, you can, to get the books, you call us here um, mm -hmm. during non-Sabbath hours at 618-627-4651. Or you can go online to 3abn.tv. Mm -hmm. You can request one free copy. So if you haven't gotten your free copy yet, 
you can just call and yeah, say, I'd like sure, a free copy. In other words, if you're not sure you want the whole box to give out, you want to read one first, yes. that's what you do. You get it, right? Yeah, you can get it free. Okay. And then once you read it, you're going to want to give it to everybody you know who doesn't know about the Lord's Day and those who do, you can you know, share it with them as well because it gives you a biblical foundation for your arguments for the Sabbath, how you can right. prove that the Sabbath is the seventh day and the Lord's day is the Sabbath. So mm -hmm. um, you can get these books again by calling 618-627-4651 or going online to 3abn.tv. And if you want to order multiple cases, you can do that online or by calling. Uh, it's $25 for shipping. You're just paying for the shipping. $25 for 250 of these booklets. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing, That's, really. And yeah. honestly, there's, we've had, I think, all we could get literally was two and a half million of these. And they're literally all, I think they're just about all gone. Mm -hmm. But we're ordering more, and it's taking time. Ever since COVID, it's hard to get things, mm -hmm. and paper taking shortages. forever. Yeah, paper shortages yeah. for sure. So um, first come, first served, and mm -hmm. so we we got more in order. We're not sure when it'll be, but we do have some here now. So whatever you want, long as you pass them out. You know, we just want you to share them uh, with people because that's what this is all about: uh, focusing on truth of God's word. We do a number of books that we have already, the truth about the commandments, I think, mm -hmm. right? Salvation, the sal hellfire. Truth fire. about salvation, truth about hellfire, now mm -hmm. the truth about the Lord's day. Then the next one, get a lot of people going to be upset. They love this. The next one's the truth mm -hmm. about abortion. So that one you're going to say, now why would you pick a political subject? No, we're not. We're sticking to the Bible. It's a Bible subject. Go. If you want to politicize it, you can, but we're just mm -hmm. going to say what the truth about what the Bible says about it. That's to come in the, maybe the fall or whenever. So. Uh, we'll get that. We gave to him you. a little tease. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so where did we, we we left off? We were talking the Old Testament. But I think let, let me take a quick something. perspective, okay. kind of like what I did about the same justification for same-sex marriage and right. the mm. violation of the Sabbath. Let's go back to that for a moment. Today, people that support same-sex marriage would probably say, "Well, let me let me rephrase it because I don't want to speak for anybody." What is wrong with marrying the way God established it to be? What's my point? Satan has made what God established mm -hmm. to be hated right. mm. and disliked mm. to the point that people are saying, God, you know, I understand what you did, but I don't like that. The same thing, the Sabbath to get rid of the Sabbath, to say it was change, you've got to tell me, first of all, you've got to tell me what's wrong with marriage mm. to want to change it. Mm -hmm. You've got to come up with a legitimate scriptural argument. What's wrong with the Sabbath? But here's the mm. danger. If something's wrong with it, God is imperfect. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. An imperfect God right. made a day mm -hmm. that because it's imperfect, we've got to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. We've got... Preachers today, I'm, I'm a little animated here. Preachers, we got to get rid of it. We, and so here are the excuses. He nailed it to the cross because when the world was perfect, that was the only thing that wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. So he had to get rid of it when he died. That's one of the reasons. He nailed it to the cross. Hmm. Well, why would you nail something that he says, remember? Right. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And the only reason is, and Brian brought this out, but I want to reiterate it. It's the only day that God identifies as it is a sign right. between me and you that you might know that I am the Lord, your God. Ezekiel 20, verse 12. Here it says, Moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies, sanctifies. them. It's a sign of holiness. Mm -hmm. Like marriage is a sign of holiness between my wife and me. The Sabbath is a sign of holiness between mm -hmm. God and his people. So why would the devil attack it? Here's the reason. It's not a day. He doesn't want there to be any sign of holiness mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the people and God. Mm -hmm. I've got to get rid of this thing that makes them holy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got to get rid of this thing that sanctifies them. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them by thy truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. If I could get rid of the sign of sanctification, they won't be sanctified. Yes. Hmm. 
if I could get rid of the sign of holiness, they can't be holy. So we have preachers nowadays saying, the Sabbath is done away with. And I asked them right away, give me one reason why something created in a perfect environment has to be abrogated. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me a reason why marriage has to be abrogated. Mm -hmm. So these same preachers should say, God, we surely appreciate you building the world. But two things that you made a mistake on are marriage and the Sabbath. Mm. And as clergy, those who follow you, we're going to help you fix it. Wow. So we're going to teach yeah. our congregation that we have this new day of worship and we mm -hmm. need to do a program, Danny, on where Sunday worship came from mm -hmm. specifically because, and I'll just give you a hint. This is kind of a teaser. Okay. <laughs> Those who were instrumental in changing it to the first day of the week don't even try to hide it. Right. Ryan knows that. He preaches right. in an evangelist. Yeah. Call it. Right. Those who made the change instrumental and solidified it in Christendom, don't even hide it. We have it all in this little book. There you yes, go. There you exactly. Go. Plus, exactly. Plus, plus the other one, plus the one that you yeah, read. The Ten Commandments twice Ten from Ten Commandments yeah. twice yeah. 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 All the documentation yeah. is there. Yes. If you want to uh, text, uh, text us, I'm looking right now, 618-228-3975. If you have questions or comments, right now we've had some coming in, but if you want to do yours, or you can uh, email us live at 3abn.tv, mm -hmm. live at 3abn. Dot TV. Those are great points, John. Mm -hmm. But today, I can see the world, mm -hmm. secular people being confused because there's so much crazy stuff out in the <laughs> world. I mean, especially this pronoun stuff. But you have doctors, you have you have uh, uh, PhDs that don't know the difference between a male or a female. Can't define they, it. They won't. Oh, they okay. won't now. Like a new baby, they actually ask. And I read this. It was from. Uh, I don't want to give the wrong university. But it was one of those like Harvard. It was Harvard. And it was Harvard. Mm -hmm. So they asked the, the doctor, woman doctor, can you tell a difference between a boy and girl when they're born? And this doctor, right, the professor, the teacher said, not really. You can't tell anymore. <laughs> now, what would her. make her say something that stupid? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like pressure. That. It's the, because if people aren't looking to the Bible, you're going to be tossed about on every wind of doctrine that comes along. Right. I was looking up for, um, on, on COVID stuff just uh, yesterday, and it said, I was just reading along, and it said, for pregnant people, uh, this can happen and that happens. Like, pregnant people? <laughs> what are you talking about, pregnant people? I mean, already it's in there. We looked up the, the, the definition of pro pronouns in the, in the dictionary now. You know what it says? Well, we, I just read it to you today, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. The pronoun, if you look at the dictionary, you'd say, well, maybe we can go back to Webster. We can go back. It'll have it. Pronoun is used, it says, for he, she, it, or they. Well, now, mm. wait a minute. A person can identify you. Identify now, the dictionary is telling you, well, that. With the plural you're, pronoun. You're, you're a he, she, it, or they. Whatever you choose. Or we. That reminds me, I think it was Melody, my daughter Melody sent me this uh, picture the other day, Ryan. It's a car. It's a blue car. You may have seen it. And one whole, the back quarter panel had obviously been wrecked and they were fixed in it, but they had put in a white one for right. the time being, right? But the writing on the outside said, this, this uh, panel of the car identifies as blue. <laughs> it was white, <laughs> but it identified as blue. You're supposed to believe that it's blue, right? right? So, I mean, you can see why the world is crazy right now. That's why we got to yeah. be preaching, sticking to the Word of God and giving the truth. The undiluted three angels' message is one that would counteract the counterfeit because I never dreamed in my mind people would be so easily like lambs led to the slaughter. If you can get people thinking, you know, talking pregnant people, talking about this person is a they, I mean, mm -hmm. that's, as, that's as ridiculous as that's it right. comes. And yet, it's happening, and people mm -hmm. get offended if you don't go along with them. So mm -hmm. I just say, you know, I'm not going along with your fantasies, whatever they are. You can do it if you want to, but I'm not going to. Don't include mm -hmm. me in that stuff. Yeah. Why is it not a surprise? The Bible says, mm -hmm. for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. What's We're sound here. doctrine? A plain thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. So all the multiple translations, and if you notice, Ryan, I'm sure you've seen this, the more translations come out, the more they dilute it. It's like a photocopy of 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 a photocopy. And they start messing with things until you get paraphrases and a paraphrase of a paraphrase. And then just somebody's opinion. Right. Ryan's 
translation of the Bible, John's translation mm -hmm. of the Bible. Mm -hmm. No, but you go back to the Greek and Hebrew and the Aramaic, you begin to see the source of it. But today, and you, you began the program by saying this, and I'm going to throw it to Ryan because, you know, I, could, I know Ryan is ready. <laughs> you began the program with the illustration of that man saying, pick a day, pick a day, pick a day. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the world says, pick a day or pick a gender. It's the same mm. spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The devil says, pick a gender. Mm -hmm. The devil says, pick a day. And what's crazy to me, this is where my mind hurts. Why would Christians have a hard time with something created in a perfect environment? I'm with mm. you. I'm with you. Marriage and the Sabbath, the two things that have been under attack. The devil started with marriage. Yeah. He's going to end with the Sabbath. Because, yeah. And we'll tell why. We're going to wait till almost the program is done. We'll tell you why he's attacking the Sabbath. Ryan, uh, we, we deal with this, try to answer some of these questions in the book. But you answer, people say, but that's the Old Testament. You don't really hear about the Sabbath in the New Testament. <laughs> Jesus, when he was nailed to the cross, uh, the Sabbath was done away with. Now we celebrate the resurrection of Christ right. because the Ten Commandments, they say, I hear people say all the time, were mm -hmm. nailed to the cross. So walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just the scripture that comes immediately to my mind, is, let's, let's go to Matthew chapter um, Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. I think that's a great place to start just to kind of tie this together. It's quite interesting when you start talking to some of these people who immediately want to say, well, first of all, the law's done away with. You know, we're, we're under grace. We're not under the law. Mm -hmm. And so they'll obviously throw the Sabbath in there because it's a part of the law, right? God, God's mm -hmm. law. But Jesus made it very clear in Matthew chapter 5 and starting with verse 19, I believe it is. 17 to 19. Uh, 17 to 19. Do not think that I've come to destroy the law, Jesus says. Mm -hmm. He shows up on the scene mm -hmm. and he says, Don't don't think that I've, sh I've, I've, sh I've come to and showed up to just destroy the law or to omit the law or to do away with the law. He says, I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And that word fulfill there does not mean to make obsolete, to destroy, to do away with. It simply means that Christ and his blood and what he was doing and, and what he was coming to do was he was coming to fulfill it. He was the fulfillment because we obviously can't keep that law perfectly. He did. But does that mean he done away with it? No. In fact, he confirms it in the next verse. He says, for surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass away or pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Heaven and earth won't pass away till all is fulfilled. Is the earth still here? <laughs> <laughs> Are the heavens still there? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes it very clear here till all is fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled yet? No, it has not. There's still much in the scripture, much in prophecy that we're still looking to be fulfilled. So this is a very testament to the fact that Jesus is showing at the beginning saying, look, I'm not coming to do away with the law. My law is still intact. Now, where does, there, where does the New Testament evidence come in that the Sabbath is still intact past the cross? Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 24. So we're in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. I want to show you this really quickly. So Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is speaking here. And uh, it's quite interesting that he's talking about uh, the destruction of Jerusalem. And he's mm -hmm. also giving the signs of the times. And he's telling all of this, notice this, to his leadership, to his disciples. That's right. Those individuals that are going to go on beyond the cross, beyond the resurrection, when Christ has went back to heaven, these are going to be the ones to establish his church and build the church and build this truth so that people can hear the redemptive plan of Christ, the gospel of Jesus. Now, surely Jesus in setting his disciples down, as it says here at the beginning of the chapter, that they all met privately at the top of Mount of Olives and Jesus gives them the signs of the times and the signs of, of, the, of his soon return. Surely Jesus would say to them, now guys, look, hey, you know that Sabbath thing, you know, it's going to be done away with. When I die, I'm going to cancel that out. I'm going to do away with it. What we find is right the opposite. Notice Matthew chapter 24 and we're going to look at verse, uh, we're in Matthew chapter 24 21. and we're looking at verse 21. Notice what it says here. It says, um, actually, no, 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 I'm not in verse 21. I'm looking at the part where it says the, uh, the Brother, Sabbath was the Sabbath. 20, 24, 20, 20, verse 20. 20. Verse 20. That's what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. my, I've got this new app and it's all jumbled in front of my face. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter mm -hmm. 20, verse 20. So saying to his disciples, he said, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. Now notice this, Jesus is talking future. He's talking destruction of Jerusalem right. and he's telling his disciples something that's going to happen in 70 AD, some 39 years after this, Jesus has died on the cross, some 39 years after so he supposedly nailed it to the cross. But right here he's telling his disciples that he was looking forward to the fact that they would still be keeping the Sabbath. Why? Because he said, pray that you don't have to flee on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That's evidence that, and it's true if you look in history, that every single person that was delivered from that 70 AD 
AD destruction, they fled Jerusalem as Christ told them, and they were all Sabbath keepers. If you look in history, every single one of them were mm. keeping the Sabbath. Now, go beyond the cross, right? Now we're in, we're in Luke chapter 23. Let's go to Luke chapter okay. 23, and you'll see here that Jesus has died, right? Mm -hmm. And you would think that his disciples, his leadership, even his own mother, who, who, who knew very, who was very close to Christ, that they would all have heard him at some point say, look, when I die, I'm going to do away with this Sabbath. You don't have to keep it anymore because there's a new day. We're going to honor the resurrection of the day that I was resurrected, the first day. All of that should have been given, right? Notice in the latter verses of Luke chapter 23, after Jesus had died, it says here, and the women, this is uh, Luke chapter 23 and verse 55 and 56. It says, And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after, and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. And then notice verse 56. So they just laid his body in the tomb. They don't have time to embalm, finish the embalming process and the, and the completion process. They're going to have to lay him in the tomb and come back later. But notice what it says. It says, Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to what? Those last few words are important. The commandments. According to the commandments. So when someone comes to me and says, well, the Sabbath was done away with and it's different now. Jesus is our Sabbath or the Sabbath is some other day or whatever. No, it says according to the commandment. And when you go back to the commandment, Danny, mm -hmm. we read it earlier. It makes it very clear that mm -hmm. the Sabbath of the Lord thy God is on the seventh day. That means that these women, including the mother of Jesus, mm -hmm. we're talking Mary Magdalene, the mother of Jesus and the other Mary, they went back and to prepare those ointments and they refused to break the Sabbath of the Lord. Lord, okay. they refuse. Don't oh, get this. Don't miss this. They <laughs> refuse to finish. Now, if anybody, if anybody could have been uh, the exception to the rule here right. to say, okay, this is the son of the living God's body. Surely we can finish embalming his body, you know, out of respect for the fact that this is the corpse of the living God. We need, you know, we're going to put him back in there. We're going to make sure it's all done tight. No, 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 no. They wouldn't even finish the process out of respect for the fact that the sad, the Lord of the Sabbath had died and they refused to break the Sabbath to finish embalming his body. Mm. So it says they went back and kept the Sabbath according to the commandment. That's right. Why? Yes. Because that commandment points to the Lord of the Sabbath, which is okay. Jesus Christ. You kind of answered right, a couple right. questions here. One is the, uh, from Nevada. Mm -hmm. What day is the Sabbath? We've been talking about it, but they want to know what day is it. Okay. We say seventh day. And so we can put that together with this one. Uh, you also mentioned, how can you talk to someone who says the Sabbath has been negated because Jesus is our Sabbath, and they use Hebrew 4 to justify this. Okay, it's let me show you the difference in the yeah. words. Okay. Shabbat is the Sabbath. Sabaoth uh, mm. is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm. They get the words mixed up. There's one Greek word that defines the day itself, and the other one, the Lord of the Sabbath, the Sabaoth of the Shabbat. Mm. So he is the Lord of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. but being the Lord of the Sabbath does not negate the Sabbath. That's, that's, that's an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. I'm the, he's the one that created the world. Mm -hmm. So he made, he blessed the last day, but it doesn't exist because he exists. Mm -hmm. You see the irony there? Mm. The Sabbath no longer exists because Jesus exists. Then why would he make the seventh day? Well, they existed together at creation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. they, so so the, 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 Jesus doesn't get rid of the Sabbath. If that was the case, then in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, why would he, while he's here, keep a day when he is the day? Mm. Okay. So, Ryan, you're talking about, about uh, the, the, um, after the crucifixion. Yeah. And mm -hmm. now what happens, someone says here from Arkansas, where in the Bible were, were the days of the week named and where does it say okay. Sunday is the first day of the week? <laughs> so how do we know if Sunday is the first day of the week? Okay, very easy. You want me to take it? You want to take it? I hit it real no, hard. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. We're going to work on this together. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's go back to Luke chapter 23. Okay. Okay. Let's look at Luke chapter 23 and start with verse 54. We'll just go 54, 56, and Luke 24, verse 1. Okay. Now, when Jesus' body was taken down, the Bible says in Luke 23, verse 54, that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew near. So we have the preparation mentioned in Scripture, the Sabbath after the preparation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's coming next. And it says in verse 56, Ryan read it, mm -hmm. and they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested the Sabbath according to the commandment, the mm -hmm. fourth commandment. Right. So you have the preparation and the Sabbath mentioned. So chronologically, what's going to come next? Luke 24, verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, mm -hmm. very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared 
But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb and they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So you have, you have the preparation day, mm -hmm. you have the Sabbath, mm -hmm. you have the first day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sh I would challenge you to tell me what the first day of the week is. Let me show you how, let me show you how clever the devil is. Okay. The very place where Catholicism is rampant in Europe, when I was working in New York in the 1970s, they had a business calendar Mm -hmm. uh, they call it the, the, call it the maritime calendar. Mm -hmm. So they began changing the day in Europe, making Monday the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. But you can't find that chronologically because the entire world, this is even the Catholic Church, the entire world celebrates an event mm -hmm. called Good Friday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Easter, Easter Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. What's the day between it? Good Friday is the preparation day. Mm -hmm. Easter Sunday is the day Christ rose. No, no denial there. Nobody would deny right. that. Good Friday, Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, Easter mm -hmm. Sunday. We don't observe that as a seven-day Adventist, but we recognize the fact that Christ rose on the first day of the week as an undeniable fact. Mm -hmm. What day is that? The whole world that honors the resurrection does it on the first day of the week. Right. Easter Sunday. Easter right. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Good Friday. What's the day between that? Yeah. And the Abbott. only time it's called holy is during what they call in the Catholic world Holy, holy Week. week. Mm -hmm. They call it Holy Saturday once a year, mm -hmm. but it's Holy Saturday every week. Right. Right. So I just have to add to that just for a moment because sure. so, so clearly put. In John chapter 19, it makes it very clear that the day that Jesus died on was the sixth day. And they call it, it says it right there in Acts 19 the verse. Day. I think, well, it's in not Acts, or John chapter 19. It says that that was preparation day. Preparation day, we just read it from Exodus chapter 16, was the sixth day. And so mm -hmm. where the, this person, I, wanna, I just want to address what this person says here. And this isn't anything to the person who wrote this in, because I very much thank you for submitting your question. Mm -hmm. It has certainly opened a door for us to bring clarity. But when we ask questions like this, where in the Bible does it say, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Because what ultimately leads someone to think in terms of that is, well, if you can't prove to me from the Bible the specific days, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it leads people to, uh, in their own mind, in their own ideology, and in their own twisted uh, life. Logic, they want to say, well, uh, because it doesn't explicitly say that, well, then we don't really know what day the Sabbath is. Therefore, we can pick and choose which day works best for us. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is this. Notice what you're doing there. What does the commandment of the Lord say in Exodus chapter 20? What, are the, what is the very first word of Exodus chapter 20, verse 8? Remember. Remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God is telling the world, remember this day. Don't forget it. But yet when we, ins when we ins insert questions like this, like how do we know that s the, the same Saturday that we have today is the same Saturday that Jesus kept holy? Or mm -hmm. How do we know which days of the week are really, could, do we really know? Because Tuesday could be the Sabbath or Wednesday could be the Sabbath or mm -hmm. Thursday could be the Sabbath. When we start coming up with these loopholes around uh, trying to keep the biblical Sabbath, what, what we're actually doing is we're implying that God got it wrong, that God lied. Mm -hmm. Because right. if God says, remember, and he expects you to remember, is he going to allow the world to forget? Mm. Is he going to allow the world to unfold in such a way that, you know, we become so delusional or, 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 or lost in, in the, in, like mm. somehow God allowed the entire, in order for something like this to happen, God would have to allow the entire world to fall asleep for several days. People start randomly waking up at different times. Like, oh, what day is it? I don't know. <laughs> you just pick what day. I don't know. And then somehow it gets lost in the, in the confusion uh -huh. of it all. What we're saying when we ask these questions of how do we know that Saturday is the Sabbath? How do we know the same Saturday we have today is the Sabbath that Jesus kept holier? How do we know that, you know, the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, if it doesn't say it in the Bible, then nobody really knows. We just pick a day. When we say those things, what we're saying is, God, we know that you told us to remember, but you made a mistake in, in not realizing that the whole world would forget and that we would get lost in it all. And that mm -hmm. the very day you want us to remember is the day that all the world is, is completely lost on which day it is. No, 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 mm -hmm. God doesn't make mistakes. God said, remember, because that seven day weekly cycle has never changed. And so mm -hmm. even though they're not explicitly Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you can find the history on this. It was some 41 years before Jesus was born. Julius Caesar's the one mm -hmm. that brought about the naming of the day, Sunday for the day of the sun, their number one sun deity that they worship. You know, Monday, God moon. of the moon, and Tuesday and so forth and all after these different Roman gods that they worship. But it's interesting that in the world at that time, before and after, even still to this very day, and in more than 260 languages in the world, almost every single country, with the exception of a few, calls their literal seventh day Sabbath. Right. Spanish, yeah. Sabado. Yeah. 
That's I mean, you right. go over into any Spanish, it's Sabado, because mm. they know that that's the mm. day. The world hasn't lost it. The devil's just trying mm. to cause confusion. Right. Yeah. Not, the Bible's we, clear. We, we have whole chapters about the change of the Sabbath, who mm. attempted to change it. Mm -hmm. What about the calendar? Uh, we even have here about the Royal Observatory, Greenwich, England, what they have to say uh, on that and all of this about mm -hmm. time. Could time be lost? Could the days of the week be changed? So we put this and then we put uh, uh, a lot of what you said. So it's Kim is Cross and us too when we talk, we're kind of fast and maybe you're not used to it, but those answers are a lot of those are right here in this mm -hmm. little booklet mm -hmm. that's free. For you, if you want. Let me uh, let me go back to this uh, this thesis I established in the very beginning about this this confusion. That's why today in some states people don't know what gender they are. Mm. It's mm -hmm. the same spirit. You get you, you see what the devil's doing. Mm -hmm. If I don't know what gender I am, how can I know what day of the week it is? Yes. It's the same spirit. Mm -hmm. We've got and this is oh, the yeah. symbol of Babylon confusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The confusion that exists today, that's why Revelation talks yeah. about Babylon has fallen, has fallen, because the church today has become largely a place of entertainment and not scribble, scriptural integrity. The time mm -hmm. will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but there are seven reasons why we know that the first day of the week is Sunday and the seventh day of the week is Saturday. First of all, if, you, if you're confused about that, find yourself a Jew. They've been around a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and tell them, they may have rejected Jesus, but they never forgot today. That's yeah. true. Go to Ethiopia, where the Ethiopian eunuch, that's the second nation that's been keeping the Sabbath longer than the Jews themselves. How possible? Because when Philip found the Ethiopian eunuch in the desert and baptized him, Ethiopia, they call it Kwame's day, the baby's day mm. in Ethiopia, the second nation on the earth that's been keeping the Sabbath as long as the Jews. Mm. And they identify that. So, you got to get rid of all the Jews because they know what day is the seventh day. But here's the irony. And Danny, I think you put this in your book. I, I think you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are not confused about what day is Sunday. Yeah. They know it's the first day of the week. Yeah. That's why they go on that day. Mm -hmm. That's sure. true. There's no confusion. <laughs> yeah. So if I said, let's go to the church on the first day of the week, they know exactly what day you mean. Yeah. Right. That's why the yeah. majority of the world. We go put on the Sunday. Catholic Church has been keeping it for, mm -hmm. you know, after the first, second century, third century AD. You will not convince a Catholic that Sunday is not the first day of the week. You won't convince a Jew that Saturday is not the seventh day That's of the right. week. Right. And That's all right. of this has been going on for a long time. So, And they call it apostolic tradition. In the convert catechism mm -hmm. of Catholic doctrine, they said the Sunday celebration is the Lord's of the Lord's day, which they call it that. They said Sunday is the day on which the Paschal mystery is celebrated in light of apostolic tradition. Now follow this. Tradition in 1565, Pope Reggio claimed that the Bible, that tradition was above the Bible. Mm -hmm. now you present this in Revelation seminars. <coughs> so tradition, and I said this in the beginning, I, you may have missed it. The concrete of error does not dry overnight. It takes mm -hmm. a long time to dry. The lie of the Sabbath was laid when the Sabbath was made. Just like the lie that people don't die was established from the time that Satan was cast out. But it took years to perpetrate it. And now today, people are saying, well, and here's, here's a very und undeniable fact. People say the Sabbath is not mentioned in the New Testament. In the King James Version, the Sabbath is mentioned 60 times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. In the New King James Version, it's mentioned 57 times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In comparison to only 12 references to the first day, Eight of those have to do with the resurrection. So only have four opportunities to find a new day of worship. One has to do with the collection that was picked up for the, those who were in Jerusalem in famine. And Paul said, let every one of you lay aside as God has prospered you, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1. So this was like the Salvation Army coming around to pick up money and pick up goods so that when I come, he said that there'll be no collecting when I come. Not when you come to church, but when I come to pick it up. Read it in 1 Corinthians 16, then Acts 20 and verse 7, where the Bible talked about they broke bread on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. But Acts says in earlier verses, they broke bread every, every day. day. Right. Right. That's what the New Testament church, we call that small group worship nowadays. So, mm -hmm. so having an evangelistic series on the first day of the week doesn't sanctify it because only God can make something holy. That's mm -hmm. right. The other thing is, you find the other reference they have is Acts 20, verse 7, then 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Then they said the disciples gathered on the first day of the week. Well, if you read why they gathered, Jesus, they had not known Jesus was raised. When Jesus rose, he told Mary, go tell my disciples where to meet me. 
they were hiding for fear of the Jews, mm -hmm. not having a worship service. Right, right. And then Jesus <laughs> appeared in their midst and said to them, peace be still, you know, peace mm -hmm. be unto you. Yeah. So they were not having a worship service. They said, they just killed our Lord. What's mm -hmm. going to happen to us? They were hiding for fear of the Jews. Those are the only three chances you have mm -hmm. to establish a new day of worship. Mm -hmm. But here's why you couldn't, because you can't establish something by, you can't unestablish what God has done. That's That's right. What he blesses right. is blessed forever. Nothing shall be added to it or taken away from it. That's right. Okay. That's Yvonne, right. what's going through your mind? Bless your heart. She's <laughs> not She's getting a word in edgewise. There's so much going on here, but you well, always got plenty to say. What? Well, this is, I mean, I'm just, I'm soaking all of this in and I'm just really blessed by it. And I'm, I'm realizing that so much of this is covered in this mm -hmm. little book. That's right. The questions that you might have, the concerns, the challenges, mm -hmm. all are covered in here. How did it get changed? Who did it? You know, and who's taking credit for the change? And then there are Protestant leaders who are saying, no, it was, you know, that they feel it that is the it's the Sabbath. Sa mm -hmm. The seventh day is the Sabbath, but mm -hmm. that's what you get. The Sabbath is, the seventh day is the Sabbath, but. So if you want this little book, you can get it for free. Request it, call 618-627-4651 or email us, no, my bad. Yeah. No, you can uh, go online to 3abn.tv. That's why I need Jill here. No, you don't. Go, on <laughs> so, go yeah. online to 3abn.tv and you can order cases of these for just $25. You can mm -hmm. have a case of 250 You can give these. There's so many Christians who need to know the truth yes. about yes. the Lord's Day. They, want, they are hungering for truth. Give them this mm -hmm. little book. It's a Bible study in this mm -hmm. book. Yeah, and God gets the credit for it and people who've gone, you know, before us, this path and information that we gather. And, and you know, when you write a song, nobody writes a totally new song, mm -hmm. you know, gospel song. You, you take from here and there and truths that you find and you put together songs and that's the way. So we're not taking credit for the book. Uh, we give God the credit that he gives us truth. He says, if we search for it, we'll find it. You know, search for it with all of our heart. That's right. Of course, we'll find the truth. So also now the call center is open, so you can order tonight. It's open for about 25 minutes or less, so more. If you haven't ordered your books, then uh, just call or, uh, uh, would you say, to call or? Uh, call or go online. Or go online, mm -hmm. okay, Freebie go online and either TV. way and order. But what, since phones are open, you might as well call. That's put right. your order in to make sure there are some books left. There will eventually be some more coming, but hopefully there will be enough to take all your orders tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had a couple other, um, someone asked Ryan, would you, they know you haven't always been an Adventist, so would you give a little bit of your testimony so yes. people out here will say, sure. hey, you know, it's not like I was raised this way. Right. Y you learned it from seeking <laughs> truth. Yeah, just I'll give a real quick juiced version of my story. You know, I, my family and I were very devoted uh, Sunday keeping Christians for many, many years. I was, I was a Sunday keeping Christian for almost 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad was a, you know, <clears throat> Pentecostal preacher raised in Pentecostalism. But also as I was going on my own personal journey of learning truth, God would lead me not just to, you know, Pentecostalism, but I went on to study with Baptist and Methodist and, and, and Catholics and Church of Christ and many different non-denominational churches on, on my search for truth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just really quickly, because there's a lot, to the, a lot of details to the story, but, you know, years ago, my dad brought this truth to my dad and mom, the truth of the Sabbath, when I was just a little boy. And where they had heard it from is through this series that had aired on this network um, oh, they were doing this big net series on this network called 3ABM. <laughs> and, um, and my parents heard that series and it just, oh, wow, my, it's got my dad to searching the scriptures and studying and he was watching all these videos from Kenneth Cox and Mark, Mark Finley, which yeah. 3ABM had yeah. produced. And, and so, but fast forward now to my time, you know, my dad and mom kind of got out of church for a little while and I didn't know where else to go but to Sunday church. So I kept going until one day uh, I found one of those tapes that had been produced by this network called 3ABN. <laughs> and, and I put one of these tapes in uh, of Pastor Mark Finley giving a, a, a sermon mm -hmm. on the Sabbath and it just kind of sparked in me, what if, what if we've gotten this wrong? What if, it's, what if we've missed this? And I remember it led me on a journey just to start digging and searching. And while I had started to see it, kind of, I still had all these questions in the back of my mind, like, I just don't know. As things just start making sense. You know, Sabbath, Sunday, does it really matter? Well, my dad got this idea 
one day to start our own Sabbath keeping church. Now I was still struggling with the whole Sabbath thing, mm -hmm. but he said, you know, we're going to start a Sabbath keeping church. My dad, my dad was convinced mm -hmm. and we're building and doing all this different, you know, uh, uh, work on the, on the church that we're, we purchased, you know, renovating and painting and all this stuff. Well, this guy walks in one day from the community and it was a guy that was going to be attending the church. He said, you know, but guy that my dad grew up with mm -hmm. and he walks in with this massive big block of books in his hands and he says, I found all these religious books that I had in my library. I'm just going to leave them up here for anybody who wants them. And, and I went through and started pillaring, you know, pilfering through the books and I found this one book that said Ten Commandments Twice Removed hmm. by Danny Shelton and Shelley Quinn, which I didn't know who in the world Danny Shelton and Shelley Quinn were at the time. <laughs> but I thought, oh, this is interesting, Ten, Ten Commandments. I liked it. I read it and I'm going through it and it just, it just was confirming more, pointing me back to the Bible. And I would do, and I had, I started creating notes. I had a, I had, that, that book was bleeding red and yellow and it looked like a <laughs> rainbow when I was doing that because I was just going through it and it had all of the historical sources to back it up. And by the way, this book that you're, you would be getting, oh, this Focus on Truth, it, it is a very concentrated, juiced version of all of the Ten, seven, Ten Commandments twice removed, right. all of the resources, all of the sources very that they cite. Right. It's, it's just a phenomenal book. And so I read that book and it launched me on a journey of just continuing to study one doctrine after another until I had to come to the conclusion that, you know what, the seventh day is the Sabbath, Saturday is the Sabbath. And then it led me to the question, wait a second, if we got that wrong, if I've got that wrong, well, how does not the rest of the world not see this? How this is so clear in the Bible? And then it led me to think, wait a second, if if, if God's word God's word says that the seventh day Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord, it, it, in all these churches, surely the Lord has a people out there that are keeping the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And I started searching and searching until I found that there was this church called the Seventh Day Adventist Church mm -hmm. that upheld all of the Ten Commandments of God, that was preaching the undiluted three angels' messages to mm -hmm. the world, and there was no question about it. And I, I came to my dad one day. I said, Dad, I'm going to be a part of this church. We believe most of what they teach anyways. Mm -hmm. It's backed by the Bible. And I started taking all of that message that I learned in the Ten Commandments twice removed. That was my starting journey. Mm -hmm. And Amen. I started teaching it and sharing it with as many people as possible. And of course, everything just snowballed from there. Wow. And, and, and praise God, yeah, you know, just you. from reading that book and watching this incredible, what's that network again? <laughs> 3 ABM yeah, yeah. has just transformed my life, my family's life. Yeah. And it'll transform yours too, my friends, if you just tune in more and watch Beautiful. the Bible programs. Thank Thank, Thank you for that testimony. Amen. There's Yvonne, there's uh, someone has a little rebuttal for Isaiah 58. We yes. talked about that a while ago. Pastor John, okay, Pastor John, to answer this, what is the difference between working at home and working at church for potluck? Is it okay for people to work at church? Isn't potluck work part of the ministry just like the work of a deacon on Sabbath? It depends on what he's doing at home. If he's at home feeding and, um, and doing things that are not monetarily rewarded. Or the Bible uses the word, and this is where a lot of people fall short. The word there in the Bible, the word work is actually a, a shorter version of the actual translation. It's servile work. What the Bible prohibits is service work. Right. Meaning, that's why it says, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. But it doesn't prohibit, I did a sermon just recently called Jesus, the Sabbath and the Jews. You can find it on YouTube, which, which addresses this issue, the difference between work and service. Now, when right. you are creating a meal for people that are gathering on Sabbath, that's not work. Service. Mm. Any more than a person is hungry and they have a need and that need is provided. But here is, here is proper, Sabbath, proper Sabbath preparation. We are not saying, and this is, this is the way the Bible points it out, and I love the story in Exodus 16, it brings that out. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to them, I've given you six days. Right. Gather twice as much on the sixth day. Mm -hmm. It's called the preparation day for a reason. Mm -hmm. So let's use our church as a prime example. This, we have fellowship lunch every Sabbath. The majority of that food is made on Friday. Mm -hmm. right. They just warm it up. On right. Sabbath morning, so it's right. not cold. Right. We don't say, bring your, bring your celery, bring your <laughs> broccoli, bring all the canned food. We're going to cut all this stuff. Up. No, the Sabbath is not a day to be burdensome. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's right. what the Lord was trying to illustrate to the Hebrews when they were coming out of Israel, uh, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Don't make the Sabbath a burden. And to people today have made Sabbath observance. They say, well, by observing the Sabbath, it's a burden. No. 
The Lord called it in Exodus, Isaiah 58, what he called it? A delight. delight. Mm -hmm. Call my, the holy of the Lord a delight. Mm -hmm. Right. How could something so beautiful be a burden? And so the difference between, if you're at home painting or cutting your grass or fixing your motor, that's servile work. Self. Mm -hmm. That's Self. not, that could be done on any day. That's what the right. Lord says, cut all that out. And I'll mm -hmm. give you a prime example. If you're married, take out your husband or your wife on your anniversary and bring a stack of mail with you <clears throat> while you're at dinner. And your mm -hmm. wife would say, Honey, isn't this our anniversary? Sure is, but I'm going to go through all of our mail, check out our bills, <laughs> see how much in debt we are. Mm -hmm. She said, no, 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 no. Honey, this is our anniversary. But it's okay. We could look, how, much, how much is in the bank? No, you wouldn't do that to your spouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God wants the Sabbath to be a special time where the world is shut off. That's right. mm -hmm. And you yeah. are in communion, quanania, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with the Most High God. Right. Yeah. Years ago, with the, we had a tornado, and yeah. myself and a number of other people from the church mm -hmm. were out all day with their chainsaws. There you go. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the ladies was out here just not too far a mile from where we are. A tree had fell on top of her mm -hmm. house and literally blocked, tore it, it, fell down, was almost through the front door. So mm -hmm. we went out and we chopped all of that up and mm -hmm. was able to get her door fixed and we worked all day. Somebody said, well, you, you have been, are you supposed to be working? I said, no, we're serving. Thank we're you. Not, we're not, it's lawful right. to do good on the Sabbath, that's right. and mm -hmm. so we're serving. So that's, that's a great answer. Mm -hmm. There was, um, someone and, said and they the heard answer, me. By the way, Danny, and the answer to support what you just said, mm -hmm. because we had that strong line wind that tore trees up in our area. Matthew 12, verse 11 and 12. What man is there among you who has one sheep, if it falls into the pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Mm -hmm. Oh, how much more valuable than, than is a man than a sheep. If people are in jeopardy, if they need help, the house on fire, trees are broken. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking right. about, lifting the burden mm -hmm. of others. Yes. The Sabbath is a delightful day, but it's yes. not to be spent in seclusion. I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to move, I'm not going to press a button. Right. The Jews have made it a burden. Yes. Don't follow the way the Jews honor it, follow the way that yes. Jesus honored it. Yeah. Right. I want to thank this viewer. They, um, they said, clarify what I said. They say, um, Danny says, we're saved by serving the Lord. We're saved by grace. Uh, first of all, we're not saved by works, right. but we're saved by grace. So I want to, it said, would, would that be works and not grace? Please clarify. So we can't work our way into heaven, mm -hmm. but the, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. Keep is an action word, and it means that we're doing something. And so you, that's, that's something, and we, we talk about this in the book, but maybe why don't one of you explain that? Why, you know, is it, is it legalism? Uh, when you keep the commandments, aren't you trying to earn your way into heaven? I'll let Ryan take the first shot and I'll... Yeah, so no, 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 absolutely not. You know, the, the Bible makes it very clear that, uh, as Pastor brought out very clearly, that the commandments of the, of the Lord, it's, to, it's the love of God that we keep His commandments. This is First John chapter 5, verse 3. It's the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not burdensome. And so it's actually quite interesting that you have people that will say to you, well, by, by trying to press the Sabbath on me or you're trying to push this, this keeping of the Sabbath on me, you're, you're pushing works off on me. When in reality, we're not telling you to work, we're asking you to rest. The Lord is asking you to rest, right? <laughs> yeah, to do no good. work. It's actually the world that's saying in, in their twisted, yeah. kind of convoluted way, they're saying, you know, leave the Sabbath alone. The Sabbath is done away with. We don't need the Sabbath. We don't need those works. But yet they're telling people that it's okay to work on God's holy day. Mm -hmm. And so nowhere in the Bible does it say that it is legalistic or that it's wrong. In fact, it's quite interesting that when you go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 5, I'm going to go there, Romans chapter 1 and verse 5. And it's interesting because many people will use that thing. Well, we're saved by grace through faith, mm -hmm. not of works, lest anyone should boast. Absolutely. But notice chapter, Romans chapter 1, verse 5. Notice what this says here. Paul writes, through him, speaking of Christ, through him we have received grace and apostleship. So we receive that grace. We're saved by grace. But what is it for? Mm -hmm. If God is saving us by his grace, we're receiving grace. What, what's supposed to be the response to that grace? Mm -hmm. It says it right here. We have, through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. Mm -hmm. All right, now go to that famous passage that they like to use, Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 8 through 10. Here's that passage. So uh, this is uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 2 through 8. Notice what it says here. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we're making it very clear. We don't, we don't gain ourselves to heaven. We don't work ourselves to heaven. We, we do not gain salvation through any type of works. But is Sabbath keeping works? 
Is it, is, mm -hmm. is, is Sabbath keeping? We don't, we don't keep the Sabbath because we think that it's going to get us into heaven. We keep the Sabbath because we love God and because He has saved us by grace. Mm -hmm. But notice this, God does not, or Paul does not count out works at all because notice what he says here. He says the same thing in, uh, that he says in Romans 1 verse 5, right here in Ephesians 2. He says, not of works, le not of works lest anyone should ver boast, but notice verse 10. This is the response to what he just said. He says, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So notice it's kind of a cause and effect here. If Christ is saving me by, my, by His grace and I am saved by grace through faith in Him, sure. that faith, that genuineness of the faith is going to cause something to happen in my life. Mm -hmm. If the response that I'm going to give to God is not, Lord, how many things can I get by with and not have to do in Your Word? Or how many <laughs> things, Lord, now can I, can I find in Your Word and say, oh, I don't have to do that, I don't have to do that, I don't have to do that. No, the natural response to being saved by the grace of God is that, Lord, thank You so much for saving me. Now, Lord, what, what can I do to please You? Mm. Not what can I do to be saved in right. working for You, but what can I do to please You because You have saved me? Mm. The natural okay. response, according to James, and James makes this very clear in the, in the second chapter of James, he goes on to say that faith without works is dead. Mm. He That's says, right. you come to me and tell me all day long, I have faith, but you don't help that brother over there in need that really needs help. Then I'm going to see your works, and the works is going to tell the story of your faith. And that's mm -hmm. the truth. And so, yes, make, to make it very, very clear, the command, keeping the commandments does not save you. However, and this is going to open up a whole other can of worms in and of itself, even though I'm saying very clear, and the Bible makes it very clear, that the, the keeping of commandments does not save you, by rejecting the commandments of God, it can keep you from being saved. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And we know this because when you read all the way through the Bible, and there's so many different references to this, where Jesus says right there in John chapter 3, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou have sent. We need to know Him, right, for mm -hmm. eternal life. Well, how do we know God? First John chapter two verses three and four. Hereby we do know if we that we know him if we keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. He that says I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the oh. truth is not in him. Mm -hmm. And then you get over to the book of Revelation. My goodness, not once, not twice, but three times three? we see the devil is making war with the commandment keeping people. Why? Okay. Not because they believe that they're saved by the commandments, but because these commandment keeping people that the devil's making war with, they love Jesus so much they want to obey him. And then you get over to Revelation fourteen verse twelve and it says here's the patience of the saints. Safe. Here are they that keep the commandments yeah. of God and have the testimony of Jesus. And then if God says, if you didn't get it in Revelation 12, and you didn't get it in Revelation uh, 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 Revelation uh, chapter uh, 12 and Revelation chapter 14, in the very last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22, 22 verse 14, if you want to make it in the kingdom of God, so right now I'm speaking to the person at home that says, well, Ryan, if, I, if the commandments don't save me, then I don't need them. I don't have to keep them. Do you want to eat from that tree of life? Do you want to enter through the gates into the city to be a part of the saved? Well, right there in Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, it says, Blessed are those that do His commandments, that, do. that mm -hmm. they may have right to the tree of life Come and on. enter <clears throat> into the <throat> gates into the city. So you put all this together and yeah. it tells a story. We're not saved by the commandments. I'm not saved by the Sabbath. I keep the Sabbath because I love Him. Okay. It's based right. on love. It's based on the fact mm -hmm. that you have died for me. You've shed your blood for me. Mm -hmm. The least I can do is want to come together and say, God, I want to rest and spend more time with you. That's there right. you go. John, he didn't leave you a lot left. He no, covered that quickly, didn't he? Oh, That's I got a really deep bag over there. <laughs> okay, now let's just bring this to relationally, make it so relevant today. Okay. I've been married 39 years. Mm. Praise the Lord. I don't do anything for my wife to get her to love me. <sighs> Come on. All right. Come on. But because I love her, That's right. I do That's it right. for her. That's mm -hmm. good. To say you love the Lord, he says, if you love me, the greatest reason to keep the commandments is because you love the Lord. The words of Jesus, if you love me, keep my commandments. Watch this. I had a lady who I had to confront with that very thing. She was an apostolic. She went to an apostolic church all her life. Her husband didn't go to church at all. She came to my Revelation seminar in Antioch, California. And when I made the appeal, her husband stood and she was concerned. She said, Pastor, I'm really concerned. My husband stood when you made the appeal. He wants to join your church. I said, but you told me he didn't go to church before this. What's, what's the problem? But he wants to keep the Sabbath. And I go to church on Sunday. I said, well, that's something that you and your husband have to discuss. But it's in the, she said, but, but, I know, but she said, but, but let me ask you, am I going to be lost because I don't keep the Sabbath? I said, if you do everything because, she, if you do it only because you're not going to be lost, then you're doing it out of fear. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it out of love. So 
her husband was going to be baptized this Sabbath, and he called me and said, oh, I'm trying to wait for my wife, so I'm, could, I, could you give me one more week? I said, you have to decide for one more week. I can't give you another minute. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that Friday night, I called his wife on the phone, and I said, uh, uh, I want to talk to you about baptism. Tomorrow's the last time. She said, but Pastor, I don't think I'm going to be lost for not keeping the Sabbath. I love the Lord. I said, that's why he brought it to you at this point in your life, because you love him. <laughs> I said, but let's do this. Instead of laboring long, it was a short conversation. I said, just let's read John 14, 15. That's it. And when we're done, just you and the Lord have a conversation. You say, Lord, teach me to love you that much. Mm. Mm -hmm. and What's it my wife, say, John? If you love me, keep my commandments. I said to her, Ask the Lord, Lord, teach me to love you that much. See, Christians today love the Lord, but they don't love him that much. That much. Mm. That's the issue. That's it. it is not truth you have. They don't receive a love of the truth that they That's might it. be saved. It. Yeah. See, it's not truth that saves you, a love of the truth that they might be saved. Mm. And when Amen. you love the truth, the strong delusions, all these meanderings, trying to get rid of the Sabbath, trying to nail it to the cross, saying that Sunday is better or Sunday is the new day, all that meandering and the maze of mediocrity and pondering of the pool of popularity is not going to happen when you simply accept and love the truth. That's it, brother. Amen. The number one reason, <clears throat> Andy, that I keep doing for my wife what I do for her is because I love her. Amen. That's right. yes. Not yes. to get her to love me. If Vaughn, you love the Lord, show it by honoring his command. You believe That's we have about is. four Amen. minutes left? Oh. We need another hour. Oh. Four minutes left. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it, the time has flown by. Yeah. It has flown by. But when yeah. you have, you know, people who are as passionate about they are. the Lord mm, as yeah. our two brothers here, mm -hmm. well, I mean, what a blessing. <clears throat> and you, honey. Oh, I'm just well. so thankful. I'm so this thankful. This is fun. This has been great. I, yes. I love it. So you, again, you might want to get this booklet on the Lord's Day. Mm. Call 618-627-4651 or go to us online to 3abn.tv mm -hmm. and you can order one case of 250 of these booklets for $25. That's in the U.S. That's just for the shipping in the U.S. If you're outside of the U.S., just call us and get the international shipping rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for those, that this is live, but when it repeats again over the weekend, uh, somebody may not always be there, so you can go to the 3abn.tv or wait till... Um, uh, Monday, and you can always call in 618-627-4651. Um, you know, I didn't finish that story. Somebody's going to say, well, what happened to the lady? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, tell us all what right. happened. That next day I was at church, and I ended Sabbath school just early enough because I wrote up all the baptismal certificates on Friday night, and she came to me after, she came to me after Sabbath school, and she said, oh, Pastor, because uh, my wife came into office, and she said, did she say yes? I said, no, but she's going to. So after Sabbath school, she came to me and said, Pastor, I'm going to get baptized too. I said, I know. Here's your baptism. <laughs> and you know what? Every time I go to California, yeah. she and her husband, wherever we are, they come out and see us mm -hmm. and all of our children were baptized together. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, isn't that great? Amen. Because she loves the Lord. That's the only reason if you mm -hmm. love him. Mm -hmm. This won't take long at all, but I've got to right. just kind of put the nail in all this right here. Yes. Right. Here it right. is. Why would the Lord take away the blessing of the Sabbath? Mm. Okay. When it points to him. That's right. Mm. And then we also will keep it in the new heaven and the new earth. That's mm -hmm. right. That's Isaiah 66, right. verses yes. 22 and 23. That's it. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I shall make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name shall remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come worship before mm. me, there you go. says the Lord. When the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. What was his response? Mm. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed mm -hmm. be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, on earth. earth as it is in, in heaven. heaven. If we're going to be heaven. keeping Sabbath in heaven, Jesus says you might as well start practicing right now. Right. It's yeah. not done away with. It's a blessing. It points to him, and we should be honoring it according to the That's word right. of God. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Thank, thank you all so much, and those mm -hmm. of you at home for joining us. You know, I had a, a friend Rich. several years ago that I'd written a book, uh, The Forgotten Commandment, to, and so he read it and he said, well, the trouble I have, he's a good Christian family and his wife. The trouble I have with that the, is the Sabbath. You know, he said uh, a lot of stuff, Adventists believe I'm okay, but the Sabbath, he said, you go to church every Saturday. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, that's, to me, that's legalism. You're trying to work your way into heaven. So he said, I don't try to work my way into heaven. You know, we're free. 
were not burdened by the commandments. And he began to go into that. And so I said, so you think me going to church every Sabbath and worshiping God is legalism? And he said, uh, yes, I do, frankly. And I said, well, do you go to church every Sunday? I said, I think I see you every Sunday. We were actually neighbors for a while every Sunday. And I said, in fact, you go to church twice on Sunday, don't you? Oh, yes, we do. I said, well, is that legalism? Are you trying to work your way into heaven? You know, why would you, you know what I'm saying? He's saying we go to church on Sabbath. We worship God. We're working our way, but he never thought about it. Well, you're doing the same thing. So I said, no, I think I would just rather go on, the, on God's day than on man's day. Because right. we know where right. man's day came from mm -hmm. and it wasn't the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's another system we'll talk about. Pastor John, as you said, for another day. That's right. So, so any closing thoughts? I'm just so grateful that the Lord has given us the Sabbath. It is, it is a relational day. It is mm -hmm. the time when we get together with the Lord and have kind of mm -hmm. a date with the Lord. All right. And I'm, I'm thankful for the dates with you and to see yeah. that God has removed Amen. the blood Amen. clots Amen. from yes. her system. And this woman Praise is in great Lord. shape. Look at her, how beautiful she is. Oh. Uh, she's blessed. beautiful inside. Points she, for him. All right. And she's beautiful <laughs> on the outside and she's beautiful on the inside. And so are you, I'm sure. Our time is all gone for today. So until we see you next time, may the Lord richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. Man, that's